This is why I will never have a goat as a pet. Let's review When Evil Lurks. When Evil Lurks stars Ezekiel Rodriguez, Louis Zimbrowski, and is directed by Damian Rugna. What's up guys, welcome to a brand new 2023 review, When Evil Lurks. I was gonna go watch this in the theater today, but Taylor Swift made sure that every other movie especially like lower budget movie that you wanted to watch was completely wiped away from existence in the theaters at least, okay? It's probably out there somewhere, but in Orlando, Florida, nowhere to be found. So I reached out to a source of mine, they hooked me up with a screener, thank God. So uh, thank you Shudder for hooking me up with a screener for this. It comes out on Shudder October 27th, I believe. And we just got through with uh, Exorcist Believer, which is like a possession demon type movie. This is also that, and I think this one came out I think the same weekend as Exorcist Believer. So you had two like demon possession movies, all right? I'll definitely say this right now. This is much better than Exorcist Believer, all right? Much better. And you know what? A word on Exorcist Believer. I know those that liked the movie, they feel like those that don't like the movie are beating them or, or, or kicking them or something like that. And maybe so because there, there are definitely people on the internet that like to go a little bit too far with their opinions, like or dislike, I'm included in that maybe. I don't know, I don't attack people though. I'll tell you that right now. I don't think I've ever attacked anybody for their opinion on a movie. You know, it's David Gordon Green, right? And it's The Exorcist, people love the original. My opinion's my opinion on the movie. Don't like it at all, but if you love the movie, God bless you. I'm glad you love the movie, okay? That, that's what it all comes down to. Don't attack people for not liking what you like and vice versa, all right? So anyway, let me give you a quick plot synopsis on when evil lurks. Like I said, this is a demon possession movie. No! But I think it's more uh, under the current, a little bit more subtext, not as much in your face as like say the exorcist movies are although there's still definitely some violent type stuff but i like that this one deals more with paranoia and you know thinking back to the exorcist you knew exactly who the possessed one was you know visually whereas in this one they don't depend on that it, it could look like a normal person with like no scaling of the skin um you know and they could be possessed right um, and so what starts this whole thing is there's this obese man uh, that's in this farmhouse and uh, this couple, they're keeping him, I guess, safe because there are different rules in this movie. And if this, if this evil gets out, then it could spread like a virus. And there's even like certain rules that must be um, abided by. Is that a word, abided? Strangely enough, you can't shoot the, uh, the the possessed. You can't kill them with gunpowder. You can't shoot them with a gun. But that's just one of the rules. And there there are like seven rules in the movie. And it's just one of those things that makes this movie so unique. As a matter of fact, there's like a character at the beginning of the movie when he sees the possessed man. One of the characters mentions, uh, I think, prayer or something like that. And he just screams out, God is dead. Right away, letting the audience know, this is a different animal. This is a different beast. We're not depending on religion or God or anything like that to cure this. And that's just because the, the town pretty much, you know, abolished religion. Not literally, but that's just the vibe that you get, you know? L religion will not save the day this time. Uh, it's got to be something different. But fear is a big part of this. The demon, it preys on those that have, like, children. Not, not necessarily exclusively. If you threaten somebody's child then they're going to go ape shit, and that's just going to help the demon. That kind of gives you a clue on the strengths and weaknesses of the demon, what it looks for. It knows that this particular host will be much more reliable because um, th that host's father or parent or loved ones are going to have a reaction to that, and then it's just going to spread, right? It's probably not going to infect an old man that has nobody around him, you know? The, the bigger the population, the better. I couldn't help but compare this movie to, to movies like the, the Thing, you know, with the paranoia and not trusting anybody. You could be a good person trying to stop it and you actually might do the opposite and spread it even further, you know? And then that weighs on your mind and you completely go insane. 
One thing I will say about this movie is you feel like there's no happy ending to this. Like, how in the hell could there ever be a happy ending to this? Because the, the evil seems to win at every turn. And, and hope is just lost. Because there's so much death around because of the demon and the evil. Now, this film is beautifully directed by Damien Rugna. I need to check out some of his other movies uh, because he really knows how to set up tension. And, and this is a movie that has a lot of violence, a lot of blood, a lot of gore, a lot of crazy shit. But it also has great tension. Some of the best tension I think I've ever seen in a movie, honestly. And I'd say especially in the first half when, when things are really starting to escalate. And there's a scene where one of the characters, he goes to his ex-wife's house. And she already has another you know, family. She's got a husband. She's got kids and everything. And he wants to go and get his kids. And I think that scene is where this movie really kicks off and goes off the rails in a good way. And I'll say this right now. One of the best jump scares I have ever seen in my life. And I think what makes a great jump scare is you're already scared before it happens, right? It's not the, those scenes where everything's nice and quiet and you might have like a couple, um, you know, making out or something like that. And then like a hand slaps a window and then all of a sudden, boom, you know, that's your jump scare. No, this is one of those situations where the, the, the evil is already there. The danger is already there. The escalation is rising. You can feel it in your heart as you're watching the movie. And you, you yourself are like, oh my God, what's going to happen? I'm scared to death. It's because of this specific scene, which I'm being very careful about, I don't want to spoil anything. You kind of expect that the scare's coming, you just don't know when. And I think those are the best jump scares. And it is executed, I mean, perfectly. Because I jumped and I shouted when this scene happened. I was by myself, you know, watching this movie on my couch, on my 55 inch TV, I can imagine if I was in a theater seeing this, I, I literally was like, oh my God, you know, that was my uh, expression. It was, I'm glad nobody saw it because I would have been embarrassed, but wow, it, it got me. And very few horror movies get me like that. I think pacing wise, this movie moves along quite well. There are some slower moments here and there to kind of build the story. You know, they explain the conditions and even like the rules along the way when you have those, those downbeats. Really solid final act, and I'll just say this right now, again, without spoiling anything. Um, we all have our, let's say, boundaries when it comes to horror. Even like Died in the World Horror Fans, they have their limits. And for some people, it might be children. And this movie definitely doesn't hold back when it comes to uh, what the, the evil can possess, you know? And for me, when you possess children, I think the, the possibilities are endless in terms of scaring an audience. I don't know what it is, maybe it's just the innocence, but this movie does that and, and it works very well. It's a, it's a scary movie, I'll say that right now. So definitely giving this a high purchase worthy. I think it probably does deserve a trapped, but I will say this, I honestly don't know if I'll ever watch this movie again, you know? And I think you'll know what I mean when you watch it, all right? Just because, it, I tell you, it's a lot coming at you. You're definitely going to need like a hug and a role model after you watch this movie, okay? Because it, it will put you in a dark place. And that's, I, really, that's kind of a compliment. We need horror movies like that. What you would call unsafe horror movies. We don't want every horror movie to have a great, happy ending. Not saying that this movie does or not. I'm just saying, even if you did have a happy ending, you'd still feel like, are we going to make it? You know, exactly. Stuff like that. But yeah. So, definitely check out When Evil Lurks when you get the chance. Looking forward to hearing your thoughts. Also, be sure to come over to Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day and every day on Fridays. We do Free for Fridays. Follow me on Drum Dums on my socials. Support me on Patreon. Buy me a coffee. And you guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Drum Dumb out.